Hi, Bobcats. Our next video is concerned with polyatomic ions. Our objective is to recognize and use polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are clusters of atoms that have covalent bonds among themselves, but they've picked up or lost some electrons so that overall they have a charge and polyatomic ions will stick together as if they were a single element in many chemical reactions. An example of a polyatomic ion is shown over here on the right as the phosphate ion. Um, it has a formula of PO4 with a minus three charge. And uh, let's see, sorry, I wanted to write that in, but I lost my pen, try again. PO4 with a minus three charge. Um, there's a center phosphorus atom that's bonded to um, these four oxygen atoms, and all together they've picked up three extra electrons, giving it that negative three charge. Everything that we've done so far with ions that have just one atom uh, can also be done with these ions that have multiple atoms or polyatomic ions. Um, so as an example, sodium phosphate, well, sodium has a plus one charge. And so if we were to go to write its formula, sodium's a plus one. Phosphate is a minus three. So we would crisscross the charges and end up with a subscript of three down on the sodium in a 3PO4 for sodium phosphate. If we looked at a uh, compound like calcium phosphate, well, the calcium ion has a plus two charge. The phosphate ion has a minus three charge. When we crisscross, we need to bring the three down onto the calcium. We need to bring the two down on the phosphate. And with polyatomic ions, if we need a subscript other than one, which is understood and not written. Um, so in other words, if we need something like a two, a three, or a four, we have to put the polyatomic ion in parentheses and put that subscript outside of the parentheses. That's telling us that we need two of the phosphate ions. If we just wrote PO4 and then just wrote another two, it would look like we're ha we have a phosphorus with 42 oxygens, and that's not what we're meaning. We need two of the cluster of PO4 that has a minus three charge. And we can do the same thing uh, with copper two, which has the variable charge metal. And so copper two has a Cu with a plus two. Uh, phosphate is PO4 with a minus three. Since the charges don't cancel out, we'll crisscross. And we have to put parentheses around the phosphate when we need more than one of them. Polyatomic ions pop up very often in your life is much easier if you recognize them right when you see them. So I'm going to ask you to memorize this list of nine polyatomic ions. We'll be working uh, with these ions uh, throughout multiple class periods, working on getting them memorized. Um, only one of these polyatomic ions has a positive charge, and that's the ammonium ion, NH4 with a plus one. All of the others are negatives, ranging from minus one up to minus three. Um, I wish there was some nice, easy pattern, like when you see the ending eight, A-T-E. Uh, it always had four oxygens, but unfortunately, that is not the case. The eight ion in a family of ions um, is the ones will be the one that chemists encountered most frequently in their labs back when the nomenclature system or the naming system was first being developed. Um, so with different nonmetals out in front of the oxygen, um, we ran into uh, the most stable common ion having different numbers of oxygen. So nitrate has three, whereas sulfate has four oxygens. Um, so it, there's really just uh, no, um, no easy way. You just have to memorize these. Now, having said that, if this is a short five-week summer course, um, I will not have you memorize the polyatomic ions. 
in summer, but you need to be uh, very familiar with these so that you recognize, oh, hey, this is a polyatomic ion when you see one. If you're curious about having a complete list of polyatomic ions, well, I don't know that anybody really has a complete list because there are so many of them. You can use a search engine and just look up polyatomic ion list and that'll give you lots of them. Um, so um, in a long semester, I expect you to memorize our previous short list of nine. Uh, in a short summer semester, session, I would expect you to be very familiar with those nine, but not necessarily have them memorized. Um, and then in addition to that, there are some patterns that will generate families of ions. So if you know the eight ion, like if you know nitrate is NO3 minus one, um, you can apply one of these patterns to figure out that nitrite is NO2 with a minus one charge. Um, for any other polyatomic ions that pop up, I'll give you both the name and the formula as they are needed. So here is one of the derivatives, the, the pattern for the derivative. If you have an oxo ion, one that has a nonmetal plus an oxygen, uh, that ends in eight, that's the most common, the most commonly occurring uh, ion that that nonmetal forms with oxygen. But if we change the ending from eight to it, we are going to take away one oxygen from the formula. So for instance, if sulfate is SO4 minus two, sulfite would be SO3 minus two. If chlorate is ClO3 minus one, then chlorite is ClO2 minus one. The charge remains the same, the nonmetal other than oxygen remains the same. The only thing that changes is the subscript on oxygen, um, and it reduces by one when we go from eight to eight. So how about this one? What is the formula for nitrite? Pause the video, take a moment and figure this out without Googling it. All right. So if we have the nitrate ion, which is one of the ones to memorize, that is going to be NO3 with a minus one charge. When eight gets converted into it, we're gonna lose one oxygen. So nitrite will be NO2 with a minus one charge. Everything else stays the same, but we lose one oxygen. So the best answer here would be answer B. Another way to generate families of ions is by adding a hydrogen ion to the polyatomic ion. We'll write that out in front of its formula. And as an example of, um, oh, and when we go to name it, the old fashioned way of naming it was to put by in front of the ion's name, um, but the um, modern IUPAC nomenclature says to put hydrogen in front of the ion's name. So for instance, the carbonate ion is CO3 with a minus two charge, but bicarbonate adds an H plus to that. So when we go to write the formula, for bicarbonate, we're gonna write an H out in front, and then carbonate is the CO3, but now we also have to combine their charges. The hydrogen was a plus one, the carbonate was a minus two, plus one minus two equals minus one. So the bicarbonate ion is HCO3 minus one. And so bicarbonate is the old naming system for it. Our current naming system for it calls it hydrogen carbonate. So as an example, see if you can figure out what is the formula for the bisulfite ion. Pause the video, figure it out, and then come back and we'll check. All right, our base ion. Um, to derive this from is sulfate. And the sulfate ion has a formula of SO4 minus two. So the first change we're gonna make is that eight will be changed into it 
which means we lose one oxygen. So sulfite will be SO3 with a minus two charge. If we're gonna put bi at the beginning of this, that means we're also going to add an H plus ion to this formula. And so the full thing, bisulfite, has an H out in the front and then an SO3. Uh, the hydrogen had a plus one charge. The um, um, sulfite had a minus two, so plus one minus two gives us a minus one charge overall. Our objective for this video was to recognize and use polyatomic ions.